All right, so this one is uh, a common issue that people have when they first start developing games. It's a feature that a lot of people want in their 2D platformers, but maybe they don't exactly know how to do it, and it's not exactly obvious um, when you start. And so I've got this little scene here with our little gumdrop guy, and I'll show you more about how I've got it set up here in a sec. But what I want to show you is as we move to the right, um, uh, the idea is we need to get from this platform over here on the left over to this one on the right, and we've got this thing in the in the center here. So if I go, I'm just going to fall and go all the way down to the bottom. Um, the idea is that we want to have is we want to make this thing a moving platform, right? We could add jumping capabilities to this guy and have him jump over to this thing and then jump again. Um, that's certainly one way to to fix that. But what I want to talk about is the moving platform idea and how you can actually implement that. Um, this is a really basic scene um, in Unity. We have uh, two ground objects. And note that each one of these, um, these are just from Glitch. These are Glitch assets like the rest of these tutorials pretty much. Um, these are just, you know, I dragged them in, uh, first created a new 2D project and dragged these assets in and I added box colliders to them. Um, there's other tutorials on here that show you, you know, more specifically about how to do that, but just, you know, for a quick summary, that's what we've got going on here. Um, so we have two grounds, this one, and then we have this one over here. Um, we have our main camera, which I didn't change. And um, actually, I'm going to change it now to get rid of this ugly, ugly blue color. I hate that. Drag this up. We'll just make it black, make it look better. Um, and uh, let's see, we've got this sparkly rock over here that, uh, again, this is. Uh, something I just dragged in from Glitch. I added a box collider 2D to it. Remember, these are all box collider 2Ds because we're working in uh, in 2D right now. Um, this has a script attached to it. I'll show you that in a sec. Right now, it doesn't do anything, but I'll I'll show you what that is. Um, and then we have our little guy here who has a box collider um, and a rigid body, and that's how gravity is allowing him to fall down um, and land on these landings. Um, he also has a player controller script. Uh, if we take a look at that right now. Um, over here on the left, you can see that uh, we're only looking for the right arrow, and if we find that right arrow, then we, you know, move his uh, X coordinate over a little bit um, every time through the update loop, 60 times a second. So that's what's happening um, with our little controller. Yeah, this is not any kind of controller you'd want to use in a real game, but it's certainly going to serve its purpose for um, what we're about to do. Um, back to this little rock, um, it has a script attached to it. Oops. Um, called Ice Controller. This thing looked like an ice uh, block to me or an iceberg when I first dragged it in. And then afterwards, I, I realized the name. It's a sparkly rock instead of an iceberg. That's fine. Um, but I created a script. I called it Ice Controller and attached it to it. Um, and right now, the Ice Controller script is just empty. There's nothing in it. Um, and so uh, remember, once you create a script, you right click and say Create. C sharp script and then you give it a name, no spaces. Um, and then to attach it to an object, like if I go back to this thing, I'm gonna remove this component. And now I, if I wanna attach my ice controller to this rock, I'm just gonna drag it over and there it goes. All right, so now um, let's work on a little bit of code. Um, we need a couple pieces. First off, we need to make this rock go back and forth. And we're going to um, do that by, um, and, and I think we did this in another tutorial, um, but we're going to quickly go through it here. We're going to leave some empty game objects uh, at, that mark the left side and the right side, and then we're going to write a little bit of code that helps this, uh, this rock slide back and forth between those two um, game objects, and uh, that'll get it moving. Um, and then after that, we'll work on the code that makes our players stick to that rock um, once it jumps on there. So. Um, let's go ahead and do that uh, with our ice controller. Here we have this thing. So we're going to make a couple um, variables. We'll have a public uh, vector or game object. Left side. And we'll have a public game object right side. And what else do we need? A speed. And then we're also going to need a direction. 
And then inside of this class, we're going to do everything inside of update. Um, it really isn't going to have that much going on. So we'll have a void update. And uh, essentially what we want to do is change the position of our transform, which is this little block of ice. So we can say something like vector2 position equals transform dot position position dot x plus equals direction times speed. Okay, so let's change some of these things up here. We're going to actually set our speed. We can uh, update this inside the GUI if we want to, but I'm just going to make up a number 0.1f, and our direction will default to 1. And what this means is when direction is 1, we're going to be sliding um, our ice block over to the right. And if direction is negative 1, we're going to be sliding it to the left. Um, and because we're going to be toggling this between 1 and negative 1, that's going to, you know, help us with our direction. We don't have to really, you know, keep track of where it's going. We're just going to, it'll always be the same math problem uh, because this will be negative when we're going the opposite direction. So that's, that's what that helps us out with. Um, now we need to make a couple of statements that decide, you know, has this ice block gotten to either the right or the left side? And if it is, we got to turn it around. Um, so we can say something like if, oops. One last thing we need here, transform dot position equals position. And this is going to actually update our real transform form that's on the screen. So now we'll say if position dot x, actually. So if we're moving to the right, direction equals 1. And there's probably better ways to do that. Like you would probably, you know, make static ints for these things to say that, you know, static int right equals one static int left equals negative one and then that way you could be putting right and left in here and make the code a lot cleaner but the whole point of this is how you stick to a platform so i'm not going to go through all the correct ways of coding you know you can do this any way you want um, so anyways if direction equals one which means we're going to the right and position dot x is greater than what do we want right side dot transform dot position dot x. So that means we've gone uh, way too far to the right, so we need to turn around. So we just really have to say direction equals negative 1. That's it. And then uh, along the same lines, we'll say if direction equals negative 1 and position dot x is less than left side uh, dot x, then we will send our direction equal 1 and move it back the other way. So let's uh, save this and run it um, and see what happens here. We've got our little ice box. And when we run it, it's probably, I'm not sure what it's going to do. It's not going to work correctly. I know that much, but let's see what happens. Okay, there it goes. It just cruises off to the side. Um, and the reason is we have this little error down here. We open up the console. Um, complaining about right side of ice controller has not been assigned, blah, blah, blah. And the reason is that if we look at our, our rock here with our ice controller script attached to it, um, we wanted it to turn around when it got to the left side or to the right side. And we were going to put in some placeholder game objects. Right now they're set to none, so it doesn't know where the right and where the left are. So I'm just going to create those things right now. So I'll create an empty oops take it out here we want this to be a parent object we'll call it boundaries and then inside of this we'll create another empty we'll call it left side and then we'll create another one oops I'm just dragging these up so that they're all at the same level come on no well, it doesn't matter but Huh. I want this to come out. There it goes. All right, so now we have this boundaries game object that I can, you know, hide if I want to. And um, and I could even make it a child of our little rock. But for now, I'll just leave it here. Um, here's our left side. I'll click on the crosshairs to see where is that at. Uh, I'm going to drag it over here. Remember, we really only care about the x value. So I'll stick it here. And we're comparing the positions. If I click on my rock, see how this 
uh, crosshair is in the center. And so that's the this little dot when it lines up over here is when it's going to turn around. So uh, if we look at our left side, I didn't make it go all the way over here because then the whole thing would go over and it would look kind of strange. So I just left it like that. And then the right side, um, I will move that over here like this. And then now we need to assign it. So I click back on our rock. These things are not assigned, but now I can just drag left side over to left side and right side over to right side. And now if I run it, all those errors should go away, and I believe it should go back and forth. There it goes. Okay, perfect. So now we have our moving platform, but um, we need to just you know walk on it and see if we can get across. So if I go on it, see what happens. Um, I landed on it, but then I just fell off. And in order for me to actually make this work, I have to hold down on the right arrow and walk with it. <laughs> Um, which is kind of hard because they're moving at the same speed. There it goes. But I had to hold down on the right arrow. So if I get on it again, let's try this. Whoa. And I let go, I'm going to fall off. Um, and so what we need to do is be able to stick to this, uh, this rock. Now the other thing that I have, I have this rock labeled as rock. It's tagged as rock up here. Um, which is going to become com uh, important in a second. So um, if you select your rock, oops, here, and then go up under tag, uh, you're probably not going to have one called rock because I added it. So if you click on add tag, um, you can type one in here and call it rock, um, but then you'll have to go back to your rock, and then it should be in your drop down, and you can select it again and, and make this thing tagged rock. Because what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if our little guy collides with a rock. And if it does, we're going to make it a child of the rock um, so that it will, uh, it will follow the movement of this and, and ignore what's happening on the keyboard. Well, actually, it won't ignore what's happening on the keyboard, um, but it will always follow this as well. And that'll allow us to move with this rock. So I'm going to open up this ice controller. And actually, I'm going to open up player controllers where we're going to put this. And so in here, we're going to say void on collision enter 2d make sure you uh, case sensitivity this 2d business all this stuff is really important if you have any of this messed up it'll run but it won't work so um, we're overriding this function from some base class so that's why it's got to be the same that way everybody knows you know which function to call and we'll have collision 2d C -O -L. so we can say something like if col.gameObject.tag equals rock. Then we're going to do something. And so remember, this script is attached to our player. If our player collides with a rock, then we're going to make it a child of the rock. So we'll say uh, transform dot parent equals col.gameObject.transform. All right, so this is saying the whatever we collided with is, is this collision object. And we want to set our parent to the transform that we collided with. So essentially, we're setting our parent to the rock. And let's see if that works. So here it comes. Now I'm not pushing anything. And he's going back and forth. And he's you know going on the platform. Now, we're not finished yet because watch what happens. <laughs> I can't get unattached from that platform. I mean, I fell off of it, but let's see, let's see it again. Um, if I go like that, oops. Yeah, see how now he's falling. And if we look at our scene, where's our guy? How far down did he go? There he goes. So he's still spinning and it's still he's falling down but he's still going back and forth attached to our little platform um, as this platform moves that thing is moving so that's not exactly what we want we need to be able to get unattached from this platform and, and be able to you know control ourselves again when we're not attached to it um, so we're just gonna add one more little section of code it's gonna look really similar and uh, we'll just copy and paste and instead of collision enter 2d we're gonna say collision exit 2d 
And that means we're, you know, removing ourselves from the rock. So either if we had a, uh, like a jump, um, or we just walk off the right right now, our, our player controller, we're only, you know, looking for movement in the right direction. So, um, so for now it's going to be, if we walk off the rock to the right, um, we're going to get this exit called. Um, so if we leave the rock, we're going to say our transform dot parent equals null like this. And that should allow us to walk off our rock. Let's see. Okay, I'm on it. I'm going back and forth. I'm not pressing anything on the keyboard. Now at the end, whoops. <laughs> if I were any good at this game. Okay, there we go. And now I'm off to the side and I detached myself from it. So, um, so that's how you can attach and detach yourself from platforms um, to give you that uh, <laughs> you also have to be good at these games. There we go. I guess I'm kind of I'm dangling on the edge there. Uh, very dangerous, floating kind of, and uh, and but now anyways we're attached to it, and you know the reason. It looks like I'm standing in air, but it's all because of how the colliders are set up. And we could set these box colliders up as you know polygon colliders or whatever um, to make this collision detection a little bit better. But for simplicity's sake, we put big rectangles around everything. That's why it looks like he's floating. Um, but the important point is that um, we watch him get attached over here. Um, we have, it is a child, our little character is a child of the rock. And then if you watch over here, when I step off of it, I'll remove myself from it. Um, so let's see. There. And now we're back to how we are and we're not, we don't have this parent-child relationship anymore because I've jumped off of it. So, um, so this is our code um, to attach ourselves to another object and to detach it. Remember, it's important to tag your objects correctly, and, uh, and that's, that's about it.